Hello boys and girls, I'm Olli Huttunen and I decided to make this tutorial how you can animate and make things rotate inside Twinmotion. There is a simple animation tool called Rotator. It can be found under Tools, Animators and Rotators. It is basically an object which can be handled as any other, but it will start work only when you move something inside it in the hierarchy list. Every rotator has a few simple options. You can switch it on and off, you can change the angle, and then you can change the style how it will make the animation. There is a once loop or ping pong setup. If you rise the angle to 360 and make it loop, it will make a full rotation and continues to circle that forever. With the speed dial you can make the motion go faster or slower. Under the angle there is an option to change the axes. You can choose X, Y and Z axes from here. Rotator will be visible only when it's selected from the hierarchy list. To make more complicated rotating systems where there is a multiple joints in the mess, we need to set up the hierarchy a little bit differently. For example, here we have a very basic primitives, which we can duplicate and put on each other. We want the first joint so that it will rotate also the second joint and the second joint should rotate itself with another rotator tool. Here are the principles. First we take rotators and move them to the correct pivot point. Then we parent these primitives inside these each rotators. We cannot drag the rotators directly inside each other. We need to right click and cut the second rotator. Then we select the first rotator and we right click and choose paste here. Now this way the second rotator and its object will be parented underneath the first rotator. Okay, let's do the same with a slightly more complicated model. Here we have an industrial robot arm. It consists of a seven different parts. Here we have the base and six different joints, which I have numbered in the list. In the start I found it easier to hide all the other joints, so that we can concentrate to the first joint. Let's take out the first rotator and start moving it to the correct pivot point of the first part. Since it's not possible for us to use any kind of a snapping tool, we have to do the alignment of the rotator visually. And sometimes we have to turn the angle quite a bit in order to see to the right place in the model. When we get the rotator's middle line aligned, to the center of the part. We can drag this first joint part inside the rotator and check from the movement whether the part rotates correctly around its center. This is close enough. It is good to turn off the play option before we continue to the next joint. This way the parts don't swing all the time and it is easier to focus on the setting up the next rotating points. Next we will unhide the second joint and start to figure out where it has its pivot point. For this one we need to change the axis direction to parallel to the x-axis. And again, once we got the point in the right place, we can drag the part in, in the second rotator's group. Movement seems to be quite good in this one. You don't need to worry about the overlapping. We can set and limit the angles later. I recommend that you name the rotators in the correct order so that it is easier to find the right joints later when we are handling them. 
And now that we have these two joint groups ready, we can right away place them inside each other in the hierarchy list. We can test how the hierarchy works in motion when we turn the first rotator play option back on. I am speeding up this video a bit now because the same process is repeated on every joint. It is important that you remember to connect the rotators inside each other in the correct order. The third goes inside the second, fourth goes inside the three, and so on until all the joints of the whole robot arm are ready. One tip for aligning the rotators is to use a 2D view. It works best for the parts with the hole. Alignments becomes much easier in the 2D view. Now that we have managed to get all the rotators in place, we can start adjusting the speed and angle settings. The arrows which describes the limitation of the angles can be found on the outer edge of the rotator's gizmo. When we set the value, it will narrow or enlarge them. And by turning the rotator object, we can set up the movement into the desired sector. The values of the speed controller sometimes have to be entered from the keyboard because the lower limit of the controller is 0.5 and it can be too fast in some cases. It is especially good to make the bigger parts of the machine to rotate slowly. After you have completed the whole process and your robot is dancing nicely, I recommend that you place the entire here inside one folder and save it in the user library. Just right click on the folder and select add to user library. This way you can drag a ready-made animated robot into your scene anytime you need it. This robot arm was found on the Sketchfab. I'll put the link in the description. So, okay then. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you and click the like button and subscribe to my channel. Perhaps I will do more of these kind of tutorials in the future. Thanks for watching.